Thank you so much for being on. Because when I came to see Devil and Daniel Webster and saw people that I know in real life on stage, I did not recognize, honestly, some of them. And instantly I was like, oh my gosh, Reba, we have to have Christy on and we have to talk about this because what you did was art. Hi, I'm Reba Hervis, Artistic Director at Overshadowed Theatrical Productions. Welcome to this week's episode, From the Wings, where we have a special guest today, Christy Dilly, who happens to be the head of our hair and makeup department at Overshadowed. So to put context into what Christy designed, the play at intermission, the Satan and Daniel Webster kind of come to a agreement that it is okay to have a trial to determine whether this contract is valid. And so Satan says, okay, it's going to be on my terms and says, these are the 12 people that are going to be on my jury. And he calls people out from hell. We actually have pictures of them coming out of the fog, which kind of even adds to the spookiness mm -hmm. of what Christy designed because it looks like this fiery substance that they're walking through. So it's not just the fact that they were real characters but the fact that they are coming from hell after being deceased yeah. right and did you have a favorite character to to do um probably blackbeard that was a lot of fun um just because i spent the most time working on him because he had makeup he had beard extensions he had a wig wow. it was just you know kind of all encompassing so that was a lot of fun okay so you just you do the research and you say okay i'm gonna do blackbeard so wh how did you take al from step one <laughs> to Black where beard. he ended it up because I think Rebecca even said that some of these people she didn't even recognize. I don't remember if Al was one of them that you did or did not, but he's a different man yep. without his makeup on, a hundred percent. And mean, and they grew their own beards for the most part. Yes, which was amazing because I don't know that we've ever had this big of a cast that needed beards that mm -hmm. they all grew their own. Mm -hmm. So that was phenomenal. But he did have extensions. But he did have so <laughs> beard I, extensions. I have never even heard of that. So please tell us about that. <laughs> Um, well, he grew a beard, which was, you know, a, a couple inches long, which was really good. Yeah. Um, but the character of Blackbeard, if you look at him historically, he often braided his beard and he would even light the ends on fire um, to smoke. And so it would be extra intimidating. Yeah. And um, same with the ends of his hair. He would actually do the same thing. So I can't even imagine. We're like, ooh, we want to get this to not just look like a beard, but to have like these braids that are a little more intimidating. Wow. Yeah. Um, we didn't make them smoke. We didn't go quite that far but um he did walk through the smoke so yes, yes. <laughs> right, right. so he had his his beard um we asked him to dye it black because we wanted everything to be very black and then we actually straightened it because he has a kind of a curl to okay his you beard. straightened it like with a a straightener like we would use <laughs> yes. like you would use for your hair and that gave it a lot of length okay. and it made it bushy but you know longer looking and then we we um used some crepe hair which is something we use in theater a lot um just to add extensions mm -hmm. and so we braided that hooked it into his beard and then put gold little uh, rings on the end of it just to kind of look you know a little Oh my word. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Um, so is that was that the first step? So he sits down in the chair and no, you do his No, actually we do his makeup first. Okay. So, um, and with him, I did a lot of contouring um, mm -hmm. to just give him a little bit harsher look, like contouring the nose um, to make his nose a little bit more pronounced and and um and then his cheeks you know contouring his forehead um we added a lot of dimension to his eyebrows we added a like a scar across his eyebrow so um we made that actually like white and then the rest of it black uh we added a scar to his face across here um as if you know he had been hit by a blade um so he had that scar right here um so once we did all the makeup, then we added the beard extensions. Okay, so that was the last thing. Yes, well, and then the wig. And then so, the wig. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then we got him a nice black wig that matched everything and looked, yeah. looked very nice. Brilliant. I remember the first time I was in cast meeting, and I, I'm like looking at all these people who are now like completely <laughs> done, right? And there was one person in the room, and I kept looking at idea who that is <laughs> like and so i'm trying to think through all the people are that are in the this room this is your cast this is my cast meeting <laughs> and i'm like literally like it's got to be somebody who's in the play but i have no idea who it is wow. and finally about halfway through i'm like oh steve hakins it's miser stevens it's like that's who it is because his miser stevens was yep. just 
Yep. I, I literally, I did not recognize mm-hmm. him at all. A friend of his came to the show and said, please make sure you tell Steve he looks exactly like his dad. Oh. <laughs> Rebecca, did you have a favorite makeup character? I thought Steve Dexheimer was amazing, not just because he was wearing tights, but because <laughs> his actual and his face. Costume was amazing. Just so good. I think that's mm-hmm. also the costumes in the show accented the hair and makeup in the show yeah. so well. And mm-hmm. I truly had never seen such excellence. I had a great team. I was gonna say, how, how big was your um, team? And did they have to be very committed? Like you had to make sure you had enough people, yeah, we especially because of intermission. Like, at least three or four at every show. Um, wow. And a consistency, because it's like yes. if somebody came, it wasn't like all of a sudden Friday night you could have a brand new team because right. they wouldn't know how to do this kind of makeup. Exactly. Yeah. So like Emma Peterson actually did uh, Steve Dexheimer's makeup. And wow. once she, figured it out like she just did it every night and wow. it, that's why it had that consistency yeah mm-hmm. and what were some of the other special effects that you used because i think one guy he died because he froze to death mm-hmm. and so his beard yeah. what was on that there is um an icicle effects makeup and it's kind of like a gel and so you um stir it up and you you kind of attach it and then it drips you know, and yeah. then they actually added a little bit of white to it to make it look frosty. Um, so, I loved it. That yeah, might have been amazing. one of my favorite things. Yes. I'm not sure that the audience always, because we never said in the play that he died by being frozen to death. You but, knew. <laughs> but for us, yes. I think we all just appreciated it yes. so much. And yes. I think it also even helped my characters become more real and committed to who they were playing. Wow. Because once they stepped into these costumes, they into your hair and makeup, they felt the effects of these people and what they yes. had done. And I think Tanner, especially with his... He felt frosty. Frosty. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I liked that. Like, I liked seeing when they get their, their makeup done and their costumes for the first time, they feel feel it you know yeah. that that character just comes out right. even more right um and i noticed that with uh, roger stoller too just as oh soon as he got his hair word. messed up <laughs> we used right. a special product to like make his hair stand up and you know he got all his makeup on he just became a whole different right. character so. and he his character was crazy and he pulled it off so, so he well. played yeah. somebody um his name was makaija harp and he was part of a brother team who literally just went killing people just for the fun of it, like doing horrendous things like holding babies out over cliffs and dropping them. And he literally was probably the most insane of all the characters and he played it. Because there's something that if you had the ideal play, musical, and you were in charge of it, what would you tell people that you wish you had? Because I know we have great people that help you. But there's got to be times that people are busy or whatever. Oh, yes. So what? how many people would you love to say are at your disposal and what would you like to do? Well, I would love to have a team of people that I could call and obviously they wouldn't be able to do every show, but who would commit to doing a show. And it is a big commitment. You know, we're, we're doing four weekends in a row. That's a lot. Um, a lot of times I'll get people who say, oh, I want to learn. I want to help out. I'll be there this day. And mm-hmm. I have one day out of 14 shows mm-hmm. or how many ever we're doing, I think we have even more this time, isn't really enough. I right. need somebody who will be there for dress rehearsals to learn the process and then just stay for all the shows. And, you know, maybe have a couple shows off if you're watching a show or you have something else. But um, just to have a team like that would be wonderful. Um, I'm always recruiting new people. Yeah. So, And the needs we have are different from show to show. For some mm. shows, I might need, like, people who can braid hair. And yeah. for another show, it's, like, people who can curl hair. For another, it's people who can do this fancy makeup, you right. know, so it, it varies from show to show. Yeah. I always tell the people who are doing costumes that it's a ministry that you have that nobody else can have because yeah. when you're, you know, wrap, wrapping a tape measure around a girl, we don't necessarily like it. So there's a way that we can wow. minister to that yeah. person and still make them feel beautiful in yeah. the unique way that God has made them. I feel like you have a unique ministry as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, hair is a gift from God, right? And so it is your crowning thing. So when you're messing with their makeup and yeah. messing with their hair, it's a thing that we can feel very self-conscious about, yeah. but yet you have this unique ability to bond with them and really reach out to people. Like you said, talk to them for 20 minutes. I love they can that. tell you why they had a bad day. Yeah. They can tell you what you need to pray for <laughs> for them. And yeah, you really absolutely. get to know them differently. And I will say that Chrissy is so great about that. She 
cares about her team, but she cares about the people in the play too, which is really, just makes you a special person. Yeah, well, thank so. you. <laughs> is there anything, do you have to have special training to do what you do or? Well, I learned, you know, by yeah. doing. So right. I think anybody can learn by doing. I always did like to do hair and makeup. I okay. would, I had a sister who was 10 years younger than me, and so I would dress her up and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. she was my little doll. <laughs> um, so I always did that, but I, yeah. you know, you can learn by doing, um, and there's like different, different skills. So, you know, if, like I was saying, like some people braid hair really well, and some shows we need a ton of that, or if yeah. they're wearing yeah. wigs, we like braid all their hair under their wigs and try to make it, you know, yeah. fit. So there's always like different skills we need. Yeah. I, you make overshadow better, 100%. Thank you. So thank you so much for what you, that crowning achievement that you do. <laughs> I literally, the productions are so much better having you on board. So thank yeah. you so much for everything that you do. Um, if you guys want to know more about hair, makeup, getting involved, even if it's not at Overshadowed, if it's wherever you are in your community, I'm sure that Christy would be happy to answer yes. questions on putting her or on the spot. Or if you want to volunteer. <laughs> yeah. Come on out and be part of our team. We would love for you to do that. But until next time, this is just me. And me. And me. Talking to you. From, from the, the Wings. wings.